it as Oud Plane for the 2021 uh, Dutch Double Bass Festival. And this is our uh, talking bass session where you have the opportunity to ask questions to the maestro. You all know, who, uh, know him, it's Bojo Paradjik. So let's welcome him. So, Bojo, welcome. And before we get started, maybe you could um, speak a little bit about your program that you're, uh, for your recital tomorrow. Let us know what you have in store for us and who's performing alongside you. Oh, that's going to be something new for me as well, because um, I'm going to be playing a program which is accompanied, actually played together with entirely double basses, which in Dangerous. a way <laughs> that fits very well to a double bass festival. But I never did it before, so it's, it has some arrangements which are now done specially for this purpose because it will be basically the entire double bass section of Netherlands Philharmonic Orchestra from Amsterdam. And there are eight players, so we needed several pieces for nine basses at the same time. Wow. So I had to in enlarge some arrangements I already had for a smaller formation of basses and we have uh, also the first performance of totally new composition by Calliope uh, Tsupaki so we will have at least two pieces with nine basses tomorrow. Wow. That's incredible. That's, uh, uh, and do you do all the arranging yourself? Is that something that you've just developed over the years to uh, when you're performing new music in different ensembles? Well, it's um, yes, in fact, unfortunately, yes, <laughs> <laughs> because it costs so much time. Just, but uh, I was somehow my my whole life, like since I just started playing music, the only thing I was really interested in was always just I had this vision of doing it on a very very high quality level. Mm. And with the arrangements, it's, there are better and uh, or not so successful arrangements as well. And the, the, it was just very difficult because certain pieces I wanted to play were just never also arranged for ensemble of basses. Like we will play tomorrow, for instance, Primal Light from Mahler's Second Symphony. It is the fourth movement, the beautiful slow movement. And that was something that in a way one student did an arrangement because pr Primal Light was used by Gustav Mahler also in uh, Des Knaben Wunderhorn but in E flat major and this is in D flat is much much somehow darker, stronger I find in uh, expression so, so I had to do it totally <laughs> off the scratch from the beginning to, until, until the ending yeah but it's it's, it's fine, it's fun. I've studied composition as my compulsory second... Uh, so it's, a, it's called minor today. It, yeah. it hasn't existed minor back then. So I've learned to do things like instrumentation and classical composition, harmony, contrapunct and so... Yeah. And why don't you share with everybody the instrument that you're performing on tomorrow? I know that you've got an unusual tuning and I'm really excited to hear that in the concert hall and how it may project and give a different sound, set, a set of sounds. What are, you, uh, what are you using? Yeah, I'm playing with a high C string, which is uh, maybe still unusual, but I think it has actually quite a brilliant future because it does actually what the so-called solo tuning uh, claims but doesn't do <laughs> because that one major uh, major second tuning bass just one full tone higher uh, doesn't actually change so much the fact that the bass is a little bit in at least in the classical music is just slightly too muddy to be used as a solo instrument and that is a big problem so playing, performing really some great compositions, sonatas, doesn't matter, or, or as a soloist with the orchestra, uh, one is always somehow fighting against a bit against the nature of the instrument, which is tuned that way, just slightly dark mm. sounding, beautifully sounding indeed, and mm. uh, also volume-wise, it has just enough capacity to 
to, per, to perform, one can perform with a double bass in a big concert hall, but it's the character of the sound that is very smooth, very, very soft and uh, slightly dark compared to the really s soloistic instruments like violin or, or piano, you know, they just, just play and it's like, <laughs> yeah, like a, it's like a razor sitting in front of a soloist who really has a good sound projection with violin. Actually, you cannot stand it in an area like around where the first now so <laughs> people in the audience start. <laughs> is it still tuned in four, son? Is it A to yes. C? A to C. Yes, yeah. it is just one extra string. Yeah. So it's in a way how the bass guitar players already play yeah. since long time is a standard. And it is a, actually tuning which is a lot uh, older than Bottezini's uh, solo tuning because it has been used in Baroque on violones with high D string or high E. Even. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, and this changes just the character of the, of the instrument uh, slightly, but, <laughs> but crucially because you get the whole, one gets whole this, uh, we could imagine the the color of the sound of the double bass as a pyramid and it has this uh, lower tones and it has all the all this uh, overtones harmonics above and now it would be just like we would hold this pyramid lift to start somewhere at the <laughs> they don't have floors right <laughs> <The> pyramids <laughs> somewhere around like quarter yeah. of the of the size up and then everything is just clearer. It has also a, a little bit less this bassy sound. Mm. And so it gets actually converted very naturally to a natural baritone from a natural bass, yeah. which behaves actually very surprisingly good with very many instruments. I think it's also a good chance for, you know, how many double basses, acoustic basses there are, which uh, aren't appreciated very much because they have a little bit thinner sound, very clear, mm. very beautifully sounding. That weak E string, the weak low end, yeah, and then you can... Yeah. But mm. very resonant instruments. So most of those behave surprisingly well <laughs> with yeah. high, higher tuning. It's really exciting. I've, yeah. I've never experienced that myself but our friend uh, uh georgie sinsiewski yes. uh, uh, he was telling me recently he was tuning with a high d i believe and i was yeah so i was uh, and he sent me some beautiful music and i'll be excited to hear you with the c well maybe you could um yeah maybe you could share a little bit more about uh your story uh Bojo, and where you are now where wherever you actually because you're kind of renowned as a soloist but also as an educator um you know a, a, amongst many different things that you do. Uh, but where are you right now? What are you um, working on with the main projects that you're doing? Yes, uh, I'm actually mainly having a quite peaceful kind of life. It sounds nice. <laughs> yeah, I spend most of my time working actually with my students. And yeah. I teach on two conservatories already longer time in Freiburg in Germany, south, mm. southwest of Germany. And that'd be a beautiful part of the world. Yeah, it's a very nice area, three countries. On the, it's uh, just around the border of the three countries, France and uh, Switzerland and Germany. And uh, I live in Luzern in Switzerland, where I also teach at mm. the conservatory. So that is actually what I do most of the time. And what I really like to do is uh, to make my own projects, which have a certain uh, particular program or like those that you could maybe have taken notice of are the published recordings. For instance, there was this double bass goes Beethoven mm. and double bass goes Brahms. And project. these are your two recordings that were released? Yes. Uh, so they are just completely, uh, they completely feature Beethoven's sonatas or uh, respectively Brahms sonatas. And those were, for instance, the projects that I've taken highest care of. And I wanted to really learn those pieces, not just uh, 
how they say, technically, mechanically. Mm -hmm. It took me a very long time for certain pieces just to understand musically what happens there. And I didn't want to start record recording projects before I feel totally ready for such a fabulous music. And uh, that was actually the idea which you could imagine sometimes consumes tremendous amounts of time. <laughs> And there are unexpected delays, and then one works at the same time as the other projects. So, but this is, for instance, what I really love to do, and I need my time and no time pressure for that. So it is not so much commercially done way of activity, I would say, like that. Mm -hmm. Because being a soloist is something one can live from when you get enough gigs. Mm. and. Uh, playing concerts, but it is also kind of life that I never really preferred, uh, always going around with the suitcase and with the instruments and the hotels. That's that's something I, if I don't have to, I rather prefer to stay at home, have some nice free time in the nature and yeah. work on my projects. Mm. So my next exciting project, for instance, is uh, this uh, uh, fantastic a collection of miniatures by František Hertel. Yeah. The piece that hasn't been published before. Have you been performing some of these on your Instagram channel? Yes. Yeah, I've been listening to some of them. They're, yeah, they're really, yeah. really incredible. It's like, so tell us about where you find these, found these pieces, because there's a great story behind uncovering is, them, I believe. Yeah, yeah it's really interesting. That's um, my ex-professor, my teacher, where, who I studied with, uh, Yiji Hudetz from Prague, and you know him also. Yes, yeah. From the Royal Northern College Absolutely, of Music. Absolutely, a wonderful man, a wonderful yeah. man. So actually his father was uh, around similar generation with František Hertel, who is meanwhile really well-known composer, as a composer for double bass. It was a very interesting musician who was widely active. He was actually a conductor and composer, he played brilliant piano. He was also playing double bass and was a professor for double bass in Prague, <coughs> but did a lot of arrangements uh, for Czech nonet and made many, many tours to Japan at the time when it was still quite rare. So František Hertel and Yuji Hudet's father, senior, were actually very close friends. Wow. So Yuri Hudetz knew just occasionally also the composer's daughter who just some day recently came with a box full of unpublished manuscripts. It's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> and it was one of those uh, that was really the really interesting thing was this big map of 30 miniatures. It's really quite a lot of paper. It's impressive. It is a very long collection. If the one plays whole cycles, it's around 94 or 95 minutes of music. Wow. Yes. So that is, for instance, my next project. <laughs> That's a big project. That's a big project. And are you going to be recording this? Is this going to yes. form uh, the next album? Yeah. I would like to m make it available, actually, to anyone. So. Uh, video production for YouTube is planned mm. with entire um, release of all of them and one can buy already this music uh, after some <laughs> six months of work Yuri Hudetz and me <laughs> did by really uh, trying to d avoid any error but we actually did with notation software yeah an addition on the highest professional standards, so one can buy this uh, this sheet music. And at the moment we have we have uh, forwarded actually entire turnover to the, to composer's daughter who lives in a very actually very very modest financial situation. Quite so, it is for her something useful, it is a beautiful project, it's a beautiful music and it's huge enrichment of the literature. It's an incredible uh, legacy and I imagine that, yeah, it just touches so many people and enriches your life and, and I think that her experience of hearing these pieces performed 
it's something that's going to be really wonderful. And you mentioned there your uh, social media channels. I just wanted to say how much I've enjoyed, particularly on Instagram. You're, you know, you're there sharing so much and there's lots of lesson tips. And how have you found that experience about with connecting with the wider base world, with this new medium? Because when we first met, the, you know, Instagram probably wasn't, didn't exist. And, no. uh, you know, <laughs> it's, um, so yeah, it's, uh, how have you found that experience of sharing so much? Because I've loved seeing all these new people connecting with you from all over the world. Yeah, th thank you so much. But likewise, I also enjoy <laughs> your channel really very much. Oh, we try, we try. All right, this, uh, th with this really very, all those very interesting conversations and uh, thinking over the things on what I find, I feel as a quality-wise on a very high level. Yeah, my Instagram account is my only social media channel. I just felt somehow needs, I wanted to, to feel a little bit who are all those people who just, uh, I felt often on the YouTube channel, sometimes I just occasionally read the comments, uh, really not very often, maybe oh. sometimes once a month. Or, I try and avoid that. <laughs> yeah. And then there were just so many people with so touching um, comments and previously it was even possible to send uh, private messages. I think it's not possible anymore. I don't see the option anywhere yeah. on YouTube. And it was very touching, really, indeed. And yeah. people were sometimes telling some little stories from their lives and oh, I great. wanted to see who are those people. <laughs> yeah. And that is what I did it for, actually, out of curiosity at the beginning. But it turned to be something I find really very beautiful as a possibility to have more direct contact. Mm. The people who, who like my projects and, and yeah, so it's, a, yeah, it's, I don't know, maybe it's like all other, it's a come and go account. It's very many mm. people were there and then they left and the, the other ones came. And uh, so it's, uh, so it's very interesting. I think people who, Sometimes I post something with electric guitar and then many guitar players come and then when yeah. I don't post anything anymore, they are disappointed, they go. <laughs> or people who like cats, they like to stay on my channel. Yes, because they always see cats always feature. <laughs> <laughs> they always see every here and there this, I've got a very cute uh, cat that I take care of at home. And <laughs> well, you're also known as a really wonderful educator and I wonder if anyone in the room has any questions about their own bass playing because Bojo is a very experienced uh, uh, you know, ed educator and teacher of the double bass. And uh, yeah, perhaps someone has any questions on what they're working on at the moment. Feel free to jump in. Me. Sure, sure, please. Mm, what advice would you give to young students? Yeah, what did, so what, what advice would you give to young students, Bajo? That's a <laughs> very short question about very, <laughs> very big, big thematic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> If they like it, to, to play it, to go for it. Mm. That's what we, are, what we are doing it for, actually. All the professional musicians came to it because of certain love to the music. And talking about double bass, I figured out, I'm, I cannot say it will be injustice, maybe, but I've got feeling there are really very many people who just love this instrument so much, and and I must I must be honest, I'm not this kind of bass player. <laughs> I, it is just you know I came comparably late on the on the way around uh, to double bass, and but what I do love is music, and double bass just appeared in my life in the moment when I was actually dreaming about how to become a professional rock guitar player, you know, lead guitar. And, uh, and then it came this thing and I found it a bit unusual, but I wanted to try it around. And, and then I discovered more and more what can I do with it. And I've just, I've ju I was just trying to learn to play it as well that I can use it as I wish. <laughs> as my tool to make music. But I cannot say really, it was a very interesting question. Also, James asked me for a very short interview, mm -hmm. it's, why did you start to love double bass? That's and, a great question, yeah. Yeah, and I cannot say, uh, 
that I really love double bass. Uh, of course, I, I like yeah. it very much. It's it's a really nice instrument. But I see also his when I when I think about any instrument, I just see full range from pros to cons, right? And uh, it's also with the other instruments. It's certain kind of objectivity. I don't have this emotional uh, enlightenment when I see the instrument that I forget yeah. about certain things. So, for instance, I've I've dropped quite many uh, project ideas. When I started working on them, I just figured out it doesn't sound as good as what is for me kind of some minimum of quality that I would need to reach to to make the project. And I just didn't want to do, for instance, with sonatas like by Brahms or by Beethoven. Uh, I, what we really need now for double bass, for world of double bass, is just to present this greatest music by the greatest composers on really highest level. Mm. And that just requires certain, uh, like, big amount of, of... It's a really hard, tough work over many years, and uh, going straightly forward and having that patience actually to stand it because you get drawbacks and defeats on the way and you have to be able to stand that to to make it all through until the end. If you could picture one of your uh, most successful students, maybe a student that's really is now performing as an artist in their own right, playing some really tremendous music, what are the qualities that that student or students over the years had that made them stand out and progress so far that we can aspire to? Oh, it is their individuality. I always tried to keep it. Uh, every single human being is uh, different. And that was, that was actually, I never planned in advance what kind of teacher will I be <laughs> when yeah. I start teaching. And it just, I was just observing myself when, when doing this. I always try to figure out what kind of uh, person is somebody in a musical sense, but also in the, in the, in the sense of uh, personal, individual human beings. Mm. We all have different characters as well, which is also very important to know when working with students. So, for instance, I must tell you, I would not start with the most successful students. I have, I have, I was kind of privileged to work with because those students were usually also right away from the beginning. One could see, wow, they have really huge potentials, and and they want to do it. Okay, one needed a bit more help, and the other one a bit a bit less. But but what I really like to see is when when I get the student who really doesn't know how to do it. And, and I just see this wish in their eyes and I feel the talent as well. And then I just go for it. I was not, um, I was not sorry for hard work, for, how would you say, spoon feeding <laughs> yeah. for many years. And that is what makes me really very happy. But for those really most successful students, what you asked, I think it is just so important. I let them all be what they are and uh, created sometimes totally different fingerings regarding we all have a bit different anatomies or working totally different way on the music, the way that they would be comfortable with. Absolutely. Was this answer on your question? Yeah, I think it does. I think it does. Yeah. I think it's that, in, it's that maintaining the individuality of the, the student, I think, is so interesting because so many different people must pass through your studio over the years and you know, I'm sure that you've helped so many along the way. So let's have a final, any final questions over here? I'm wondering if I should jump in and do one, but yeah. Uh, what is the most important thing to you when you interpret a piece? I'm trying to feel it the way, at certain moment, of course, I never know if I'm right. I always yeah. consider I might be totally wrong, but I try to feel the, the piece somehow the way how composer could have what could composer have felt when 
he or she was composing it. And uh, that is very difficult because we are all totally prone to our subjectivity. And, uh, but that is a very interesting thing, trying to be like a medium of the composer. That, was, that is always my primary idea. So it's, uh, that's why maybe that is why I was always much more attracted by, I don't want to say heavier music or more complicated, but this really very, very um, profound compositions, because that, that gives a lot more work. Um, somehow one can spend time with those pieces a lot and uh, I'm a little bit less friend, uh, I would say, as an interpret, I maybe, of course, I could say I really like Bottezini's music and really I have so much respect for he, for he was a wonderful musician and such a talented person. But those pieces have certain kind of um, limits in a, if we really consider how deep they go, it is not very chamber music. It's very lot of uh, lot of uh, kind of patterns that are being repeated, particularly technically. Mm. So, so this is kind of music that I sometimes, of course, also play. I, I like it, but I like much more to spend more time with uh, pieces which go much more into the depth somehow and which are emotionally also really demanding, uh, very, very, in a way, interesting to spend longer time with. I hope I could answer your question this way. Yeah. That's great. So if there's n any further questions, or shall we maybe wrap up there? Bojo, where can people learn more about you? Where can we go to connect with you online? Uh, about I don't know if I am so interesting as a person. <laughs> I think the projects are nice. <laughs> but is it uh, dot com? Yeah, it's there is bojoparajic.com, so I have basic information there, so concert information and so on. On YouTube, you can always see the result of big works. Uh, on Instagram, one can see maybe the most of which is what is happening, what is going on at the moment, and. So that is, I think, a good way to go. Great. Well, please go and check that out. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today at the Dutch Double Bass Festival. Let's all go and see some incredible concerts and best um, wishes for tomorrow's uh, recital. I'm sure it'll be absolutely incredible. So thanks for joining us, Bojo. Thank you so much. Thank you.